Hi boys and girls, today we're going to be learning about adding and subtracting fractions. Now if the fractions have the same denominator, it's quite simple. All you're going to do is add or subtract the numerators and leave the denominator the same. And we're going to go over some example problems of adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator in just a moment. But what if the fractions have different denominators? Well then you have to take a few extra steps. You have to make equivalent fractions first and make sure your fractions have the same denominator before you go ahead and add and subtract them. Let's get started with some example problems. I have 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths. And if I take a look, my denominators are exactly the same, so I can just go ahead and add up my numerators. So 3 plus 2 equals 5, and my denominator stays exactly the same. So 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths equals 5 sevenths. Let's take a look at our subtraction example. 4 fifths minus 2 fifths. Again, my denominators are exactly the same, so I only need to focus on my numerators. 4, take away 2, equals 2, and my denominator stays the same. 4 fifths minus 2 fifths equals 2 fifths. Now let's take a look at some of the trickier problems. 2 thirds plus 3 fifths. We notice that our denominators are not the same, so it's our job to make sure that they are the same by creating equivalent fractions. So here's how we do that. We rewrite our fractions one above the other. And then we need to look at our denominators. For this fraction, my denominator is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the 3 times table. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And I'm going to do the same for my denominator down here. I have a 5, so I'm going to go ahead and write the 5 times table. 5, 10, 15, 20. I then need to search for the first number that they have that's in common, the like denominator. So as I do that, I see the first thing they have in common is a 15. So that's going to become the new denominator for both of my original fractions. All right, now we look at our denominators. We ask ourselves, how do we get from 3 to 15? Well, we're going up, so that means we're multiplying. So 3 times what gives us 15? And 3 times 5 gives us 15. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So we also multiply our numerator by 5. And 2 times 5 equals 10. So this shows us that 2 thirds is equivalent to 10 15. Now we move on to our bottom fraction. Again, we look at the denominator and we ask ourselves, how does 5 get to 15? We're going up, so we're multiplying. 5 times what is 15? 5 times 3 equals 15. Whatever we do to the denominator, we must do to the numerator. So we also multiply our numerator by 3. And 3 times 3 equals 9. All right. Now, what I like to do is I like to rewrite the original problem back up top the way it looks. So 2 thirds is equivalent to 10 fifteenths. And 3 fifths is equivalent to 9 fifteenths. And in this problem, they're asking me to add. Now, my denominators are the same. So I can just go ahead and focus on my numerators. 10 plus 9 equals 19 and my denominator stays the same. Let's try a problem with subtraction. Again, my denominators are different, so it's my job to create equivalent fractions to make them the same. I rewrite the fractions, and I begin to list the times tables of the denominators. And again, this is something you can do in your head, but it's always good to check yourself by writing it down. So we have 6, 12, 18, and down here we have our two times table. Two, four, six, eight. And as we search for like numbers, the first one we see that they have in common is a six. So six is going to become our new denominator for our equivalent fractions. How do we get from six to six? 
Well, with multiplication, we just multiply by 1. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So we also multiply our numerator by 1, and 4 times 1 equals 4. Now this fraction actually was able to stay exactly the same, which will sometimes happen for you. Down below, how do we get from 2 to 6? We multiply by 3. 2 times 3 equals 6. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And 1 times 3 equals 3. Now I go back up to my original problem. 4, 6. Remain the same. Minus and 1 half turned into an equivalent fraction of 3, 6. Now my denominators are the same and I can just focus on my numerators. And 4 minus 3 equals 1. Keep my denominator the same. And therefore, 4, 6 take away 1 half equals 1, 6. Alrighty. It is time for you to try some practice problems on your own. For problem number one, I've included two examples. One with addition and one with subtraction where the denominators are the same. And then for two, three, and four, it's a mixture of addition and subtraction where the denominators are different. So you must remember to make equivalent fractions first. And after you're done doing your practice problems in box three of your homework sheet, I'd like you to return to box one, Global Connections, and think about when you might use this strategy, finding equivalent fractions and adding and subtracting fractions in real life, and put that example on your homework sheet. And if you still have questions or comments or strategies that you use to help you solve these problems, please put them in box four of your homework sheet and we'll discuss them tomorrow in class. You've been flipped with Mrs. Manafo.